Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In this video I'm going to begin construction of the second Mars transfer vehicle and I'm going to expedite it a little bit because well we've sort of done this before and most of these launches you've seen before so I don't want to belabor the point. I want to make it nice and quick but I do want to show all the launches in the construction process because it's sort of neat anyway. So to that end I'm doing post commentary which means that I record all launches first and then add the commentary which means that I can pack more launches into a shorter video. Otherwise if I'm trying to comment during the launches I usually find more to say. That's more appropriate when I'm introducing new systems but since this has already launched in this series before there was no need to introduce it again. There's just the control module at the front of the Mars transfer vehicle. It includes reaction wheels, thrusters, and soul panels that, as it turns out, are too weak. I haven't fixed that. So this is actually going to run out of electric charge even before we dock the next thing to it. But uh, So it's the control module and the docking module there. And we've already seen this in action. Uh, they have full shielding as far as Kerbalism is concerned and the radiation. And uh, we will keep that up for the rest of the Mars transfer vehicle. So instead of putting half shielding on the inflatable part, I'll put full shielding there as well. I tried to sort of point this stage in the right direction for deorbiting, but that didn't work out. And finally, I got this to its correct orbit around the same orbit as the International Space Station is in. And that'll make rendezvousing easier. So the next stage is for the Sajita with four boosters and this contains the hardened hab which was originally where they were going to sleep and all and it would have full shielding but I'm putting full shielding on the inflatable module as well so it's somewhat redundant but more living space is better anyway. And this also has the tug and instead of sending four tugs this time I'm sending just two and it'll be the two larger tugs instead of having two small ones and two large ones. And that'll hopefully simplify things. Though the tugs aren't really that much dry mass. I figure it's uh, somewhat of a benefit for the vehicle. We didn't really need those backward facing tugs anyway. Okay, so separation. And there's a tug at the top. Plus the hardened hab. The hardened hab is just another one of the Sajita upper stages that have been converted to a station business. So it is basically the same tank that we have on the Sajita upper stage and it is turned into a station module. Okay, and the upper stage is done. This time I put RCS on the upper stage so it could deorbit properly. But first we need to make sure that the tug grabs onto the hab and pulls it away, of course. The tug couldn't be fully fueled. Originally this launch had the smaller tug and so the launch was not didn't have enough boosters to handle a fully fueled one of these large tugs. Okay, and then decouple. And then the stage will turn around and deorbit itself. We're trying to limit our space trash here. Haven't really gotten to the reusing of the Sajita rocket, but I figure I should wait until I make a larger rocket so that we don't cut down on the payload capacity. So once I introduce the Hydrolox rocket maybe, Maybe we will then um, then start with the reusability thing. And probably I'll go with just returning the engine cluster on that. I think that'll be the most convenient thing to do. So here we are getting our station module to the new Mars transfer vehicle. I call it station module anyway. I'll call it Mars transfer vehicle and station interchangeably. And also very importantly getting this tug. There has to be two tugs, one with the circular docking port, the one that crew can go through, and one with the diamond docking port, which is only for refueling at the center line. Of course, both tugs have the two docking ports at either end still. Anyway, so that is attached, but during the docking procedure I lost communication, which reminded me to send up some commsats. So we're gonna send up our little sat pack earth configured so it doesn't have the heat shield on it and we're going to put it into sorta geostationary orbit-ish and we'll have four nice communication satellites so that we don't uh, have gaps in our communication anymore and uh, I can continue with the assembly without any hassles. So you've seen this launch before for the sat pack but last time we actually sent it over to Mars. This time it's just geosynchronous orbit but Delta V wise it's about the same to be honest so but 
Uh, we have margins since we dumped the heat shield. And the first stage is out. Separation and ignition. Now this upper stage won't be able to deorbit itself. It'll expend itself just uh, pushing us as much as it can towards geosynchronous orbit. It won't be able to finish that burn. But we'll take all the help we can get. So there it is with about 1,400 meters per second remaining. Here we have the pedals with the solar panels out. Of course, it's in the dark, so it doesn't really matter. But selling the fuel down and ignition, reignition of this stage. Very quick burn. Now, for the BE-7 that I've put on the transfer stage up there, um, it seems to have problems either because I'm backward or I misconfigured its gimbal somehow. I'm pretty sure I've used it on the Blue Moon before, so I don't think I misconfigured the gimbal. But uh, it doesn't like being backwards, is basically what I'm saying. Somebody had proposed a solution to that, but I haven't, uh, I haven't enacted it yet. But basically, it, it doesn't like to gimbal. Uh, and so I have to turn the gimbling off and just use the RCS to turn around, which is fine, which is fine. And so, yeah, I don't know why, but it, it tends to flip the thing around and around when I try to use its gimbling to control the thing. And that's strange. But I can deal. And of course we have reversed control points here because it's all backwards. But that did not end up causing any particular problems this time. If I forget to turn off the gimbling on the BE-7, it will cause problems. And so here we are at the conclusion of the initial burn, getting the apoapsis up there. And then once we've got that, we head out to apoapsis to circularize. I've plotted the plot there, and I took the opposite heading and pitch. So that's what Smart ASS is uh, pointing towards, so that we can complete that burn. That brings us to an inclination of about 5 degrees, 4 to 5 degrees. And I didn't actually get to a 24 hour orbit, well 23 hours, 56 minutes and 4 second orbit right now, because I wanted the little satellites, the commsats, to finish the last hour on their own. And then the transfer stage that's carrying them will cycle for 4 orbits basically four days, and then release another one, and then wait four days, uh, sorry, not four days, six days, and release another one, wait six days, release another one. So this process took about 24 days. Uh, actually, I take back, I guess, 18 days, right? Three gaps. Okay, so this one is just trying to get itself away from the transfer stage. Transit stage still uses regular RCS, MMH, and N204. It doesn't uh, use the hydrogen and oxygen it carries for RCS. The Blue Moon does. That does use hydrogen and oxygen, but transfer stage just uses hypergolics for that. And there's a hypergolic, oh, a little pause there, um, 400 Newton engine. Unfortunately, that's not small enough to make fine adjustments uh, for our orbit here. And there's no forward or backward facing RCS on this. It's all off to the side, designed to point away from the solar panels. So once I get it pointed, once I get the ComSat pointed towards the sun, it sort of changes our orbit quite a lot. So I can't get quite to 23 hours, 56 minutes and four seconds. I skipped the two middle ComSats. You get the picture, this is the last one already. And uh, yeah, we're just getting it configured. Same deal many times, but the point is that we got it done and they'll drift though because I couldn't hit the exact same number simply because of turning towards the sun after the main burn to lift its orbit and like that burn, but you can see it's just not going to be very accurate. I got pretty close though, but eventually they'll drift. So there we go, made sure to put it on persistent rotation with SAS on. And then I told Kerbalism to never remind me about them ever again. Because it seems like the communication doesn't turn off even if Kerbalism thinks the power is off, which is fine. Um, so yeah, I don't need to be reminded of them and they'll probably, there. there's all four of them. Of course, we're only communi uh, communicating with the two that are off to the side, not the one 
through the earth there. But yeah, they'll do their business and we probably don't need to pay attention to them again unless unless um, they go completely out of whack because they're out of phase with each other. I tried to see if I could deorbit this. Um, turns out that I did a bad thing. I probably should have just tried the burn. I think it would have worked. But anyway, I just got rid of it as junk in the trans, uh, in the tracking station and did it that way. Okay, so this is the launch of the inflatable module, the Bigelow B330. And it needs uh, Sajita Heavy, as you can see. It is a pretty heavy module. We added full shielding, so we made it heavier than last time. But judging from the last time, we had enough margin. So I decided that we could go ahead. I also added more lithium hydroxide and more nit nitrogen for the pressurization system. So we're pretty good. Uh, food, water, and oxygen there is 180 days for a nominal crew. So we'll need still need more supplies, but we weren't going to carry that on this launch anyway. So up it goes. And getting ready for booster separation. Okay, booster set. Uh, pauses. I did all the launches in this video uh, during one session and without restarting Kerbal Space Program. So close to the end, it's going to get really pausey. Um, so there's been a lot of docking, lots of launches, but I was overall pleased with the stability of KSP 1.6.1 at this point. We'll see if that holds up. Okay, separation and ignition of the upper stage. Unfortunately, I mounted the B330 sort of upside down. So a tug is going to have to grab it from the top end here. And then dock to the station on the end that is currently attached to the Sajita upper stage. But the end that's currently attached to the Sajita upper stage is the one with the extra lithium hydroxide and nitrogen. And the one at the top is the one, the end with the crew tube. So, so to have that backwards, basically. I mean, there's no reason that the crew can't uh, sort of unpack the lithium hydroxide and nitrogen canisters, I guess. I don't know. But we'll make do. I don't have um, connected living space installed anyway. So at this point, we had to send a tug out to grab the inflatable module. And it's good that we now only have the big tugs rather than the two little ones. Because uh, the little one was, it was a tight fit. No, I think I had to grab it on the end because the B330 was too big for it to grab at the center line docking node. So this is much better. Also, I'll make sure to grab fuel from the Sajita upper stage, leftover fuel, and fill the tug with it. And again, we launched the tug with uh, less than its full load of fuel anyway. So it'll be good to replenish it whenever possible. Hopefully, I'll make a point of that in uh, future launches as well when we grab things with the tug. I mean, I don't know if... Uh, I got into discussion during a live stream yesterday about whether we've actually done propellant transfers. I figured the Russians have. I don't know if the United States has done propellant transfers in space yet. Um, so, yeah. Really need that technology. It seems like NASA is working with SpaceX to do that sort of thing. And presumably that will be for methane and oxygen, so that's good. I imagine hydrogen is much more difficult. But eventually that will have to be done too. Anyway, so we transferred the fuel. And we still had enough fuel in the Sajita upper stage to deorbit. Looks like about 600 meters per second. Unfortunately, I had to do it with the RCS because I accidentally double clutched the the engine ignitions on the upper stage uh, many times, accidentally, and so I ran out of ignitions on that engine. Yeah, I was uh, a little bit impatient, I guess, and uh, there were numerous transfer burns, more than I should have done, actually. Okay, anyway, but the tug's got it and bringing it in. Looking good so far. Not too much hassle putting this together. Um, we will, uh, after this, I'll add one of the solar arrays. So that'll be in this video. 
And then after that, we need the two other solar arrays. I figure we can get away with the same amount of solar panelry. I don't think that was the big problem going on. And uh, what we really need is more of the methane oxygen tanks. And uh, we probably need more xenon tank. More propellant would be good. Uh, it's always good. But I don't know, maybe the xenon tank, we don't need to carry so much of it. Uh, I, I dumped some and we still basically had sort of a return solution in a way. So maybe focusing on more methane and oxygen would be good. And then supplies, of course. I don't know if I want to do the whole quest airlock thing again. Anyway, here we have ignition of the solar truss, the first solar truss launch. And this is just a Sagita with four of the small boosters. Um, yeah, I, one other possibility instead of using the quest airlock is actually using the the Lynx capsule lander can. Because it does have an airlock on it by necessity, right? So just using that would be simpler. Well, it looks like our boosters did not survive this time. S sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Anyway, uh, fairing separation just before the end of the first stage here. That's a little bit close. Yeah, uh, when it has four boosters, it's a bit of a toss-up when which one goes first. Gotta get the staging right. Uh, another option is just to put the fairings on action group one, but I tend not to do that. Probably should do that more consistently. But sometimes that might foul up. No, it probably would be alright. So we're actually bringing up a tug along with the solar array and we're getting it just narrowly to orbit. But I've done these launches before so I know what the margins are. And the nice thing about KOS is it's consistent. Of course the launches were originally done a lot of the time just with me manually. I think this launch I was manually controlling it. But that especially gives me an idea of what kind of margins I have. So here we go. We need to separate off the tug and have it dock onto the truss and then it will take care of bringing it to the station slash Mars transfer vehicle. And this is our second tug, so this is the one with the propellant only docking port on its center line. Again, it's the large size, which is good. Fits this quite well. Orientation of the solar panels is going to be a big thing when we dock it to the uh, to the station. But I've made a mistake, and that is with attempting uh, attempting to mount this. Uh, neither that decoupler nor the docking port. We had this problem before, but I thought it was because I had used the propellant-only docking ports. I think there might be another reason. It might be because the docking port is not placed on its node, but I'm not sure. But yeah, this failed. I couldn't get it off. And we've had this problem before. So it wasn't actually my propellant only. I think it wasn't actually my propellant only docking ports that caused that problem. But I'm not sure. Maybe they still have a problem when stacking things in the VAB ahead of time. But anyway, I decided to deorbit this. And we'll launch again with a decoupler there. So that we can make sure to get it off properly. So relaunch. Relaunch of the first solar array for Mars Transfer Vehicle 2, MTV-2 at this point. That is what it is called. This has actually more than a thrust weight ratio of 2 at the start. You saw that pause right after? Yeah, the game is getting a little bit pausy. It is um, it's getting more laggy because I've done so much during this one session. All The entire launch is just more laggy now. So I knew I had to restart. But anyway, I just wanted to get this done. And fairing separation, basically the same thing with one extra decoupler and a radial attachment point. Ah, uh, lag. Okay. Nice view though. And we're getting ready for first stage separation. And there we go. Yeah. So my intention with this second Mars transfer vehicle is to put some crew on it. And that's going to be a heck of a risk. But you know, what are Kerbals for? <laughs> right? What are Kerbals for? It's about time we risk some. And maybe they'll survive, maybe they won't. We'll see. We'll send some support vessels along with it. 
to do the best we can, of course. We've already got the commsats around Mars. We'll improve what kind of dishes we send along with some of our uh, equipment. Uh, it seemed like the Mars Trans vehicle had good enough comms anyway. And we can make sure of that with the one that we've got coming back. And here we are just stocking up with the truss to pull it away. And this time we've got a decoupler to help at the other end. And this time we don't have to like extend the solar panels on the truss. I think last time when I constructed the first Mars transfer vehicle, I had to extend the solar panels on the truss in order to get it to have power during the rendezvous part. But now we've got the solar panels on the tugs, so it's okay. And actually this tug is going to have to remove itself from the truss in order for us to extend the solar panels, which I want to do. Speaking of stations, people have asked about mods containing the International Space Station. And I saw that on NASA's 3D model website, they have a pretty detailed ISS, actually. It's like a 700 megabyte Blender file. It was It's a really hard file to deal with. It lumps all the modules into one part, one object in Blender. So that's very inconvenient. And as like nearly 3 million polygons and worse, it had 1000 materials. And of course in Kerbal Space Program, you can only have one material per part. But I'm contemplating trying to create at least some of the modules from that, but each part is gonna have to be completely retextured. And so it's a big business. But um, yeah, uh, I'll think about that. I need an ISS for other purposes anyway. So we will see. So here we go. I needed to relocate that tug to get it out of the way. We needed the solar truss attached to that docking port. So just gingerly getting this on and then now moving the truss onto the Mars Trans vehicle number two. Now, because of the way I had done the docking for the other modules a little bit hastily, I had to basically eyeball the orientation. I was trying to line up with the solar panels with the propellant only docking ports on the docking module up front and try to get those in line. There was nothing else really to line up with, but I figured that would be a good thing to align with for those who would be irritated with me if I didn't keep things in line, of course. So hopefully I did a good enough job with that. Uh, but it was just eyeballing it, so... Maybe it's not going to be quite right, we'll see. But at least all the solar panels should be in line. We'll make sure they line up. That'll be easy. Okay, so just redocking that so that we can extend the big solar arrays. That's a little bit awkward right now, but it'll have to do. And that's because of the front one being tilted. And extend. And extend. And that's what it looks like right now. So I think we've gotten this done much faster than I did the first one. So I'll try and keep up this pace so that we can, we don't belabor this part, which you've seen, basically seen before. And uh, yeah, so construction of Mars transfer vehicle number two is well underway. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.